In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure a vSAN network on a cluster of vSphere 7 ESXi hosts. And to demonstrate this particular task, I want to utilize the VMware Hands-On Labs. These are amazing free labs that you can access yourself. There's no charge for these. So if you're looking for a very convenient way to try out things that maybe wouldn't work so well in your home lab, like for example vSAN, this is a great way to try those things out. So I'm going to launch a lab here, a vSAN Getting Started Lab, that's available at hol.vmware.com, and I'll use that lab environment to demonstrate these tasks. Now, if you're trying to follow along at home and complete the same set of tasks that you see me completing, just understand that the particular lab that I'm using may or may not be available, but I would guess that you're probably going to be able to get access to some sort of vSAN lab at hol.vmware.com. So don't get hung up on the specific version of the lab. Just try to use whatever version is there to replicate these tasks if you're following along at home. So here in my hands-on lab environment, I've already signed into the vSphere client and I'm going to go to hosts and clusters. And here under hosts and clusters, you can see that we've got one cluster that's already created. And then we've got some ESXi hosts in that cluster. And then there's a bunch of other hosts that are not currently part of the cluster. And so let's take a look at this pre-created cluster that currently contains three ESXi hosts. And I'm going to click on the configure tab here and I'm going to scroll down to vSAN. And we can see at the moment that vSAN is currently turned on. So vSAN is already enabled on this particular cluster. So let's examine one of these ESXi hosts and under configure on my ESXi host, let's go to VM kernel adapters. And here you can see all of the VM kernel ports that have been created for this ESXi host. And we can see the services that are enabled on each of them. So on this first VM kernel port, the enabled service is management. On the second VM kernel port, we're using this one for storage. Here's our vMotion VM kernel port. And last but not least, we have a VM kernel port with the vSAN service enabled. So on this host, a VM kernel port has been created and that VM kernel port has been marked specifically to handle vSAN traffic. So this is where all of the vSAN traffic on this first ESXi host is going to flow. And if I take a look at the second ESXi host, you see something very similar. And if I take a look at the third ESXi host in my cluster, again, all three of them have VM kernel port three, and all three of them have vSAN enabled on that third VM kernel port. So what physical network is actually going to be used for this vSAN traffic? Well, if I click on my virtual switches, I can see here which VM kernel port is connected to which virtual switch. And so down here at the bottom, I've got a port group and the port group is called vSAN region A01. And there's that third VM kernel port. And I can see here based on these little yellow lines, yep, we've got uplink one and uplink two. These are the two physical adapters on this particular ESXi host that are going to carry all of this vSAN traffic. So this hands-on lab has already really built most of the prerequisites here for this vSAN network. Now, if that was not the case, I could go to this VM kernel adapters area and for ESXi01, I could click on add networking. I could create a new VM kernel port and I could pick which network that VM kernel port was going to connect to. So here I'll pick my distributed port group for vSAN traffic and I'll create a VM kernel port connected to that port group. And then I could give it a name. I could set the IP address for it, of course, and I could tag vSAN traffic as an enabled service on this VM kernel port. 
So that's how I could go through the process of manually building that vSAN VM kernel port if it didn't already exist on this ESXi host. So from a troubleshooting perspective or just a general verification perspective, you want to make sure that all of the hosts in the vSAN cluster are configured with VM kernel ports that can communicate with one another. If I have a virtual machine, for example, it could be running on ESXi01, but it could have a virtual disk present on ESXi02. The vSAN VM kernel port is going to be used to allow that virtual machine to communicate with those storage objects on other ESXi hosts. So it's critical that these vSAN VM kernel ports are configured consistently and that they can communicate with one another. Okay, so let's return our focus to this virtual switch diagram. And remember, like I mentioned before, here's my vCN VM kernel port, and I can trace back the physical adapters that it's actually utilizing right here in this diagram. And those two physical adapters have been associated and assigned as uplinks to this particular vSphere distributed switch. So if we go over to the networking view, and we expand this. Here we can find the vSphere distributed switch. And here we can find the distributed port group that those VM kernel ports exist on. So on this port group, I'm just going to click on the configure tab. And I'm going to go over to the policies associated with this particular port group. And this port group has been configured with a NIC teaming method. Route based on originating virtual port. And it's configured to utilize uplink 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, my physical ESXi host itself only has two physical adapters, so it's only going to use the first two uplinks, but it could potentially use a maximum of four. So, an important thing to understand here is we've configured this port group for route based on originating virtual port. So, let's go back to our ESXi host here. And this configuration allows my ESXi host to tolerate a failure of one of these physical adapters. So this port group has VMNIC1 and VMNIC0. Those are two of the uplinks for this distributed port group. And if either of those uplinks fails, well, the other one is still there. And traffic can continue to flow out to the physical network. So that's the biggest benefit of multiple uplinks is redundancy we have the ability to tolerate the failure of an uplink. Now, is originating virtual port the ideal NIC teaming method for my vSAN network? Maybe, uh, maybe not, depending on what I'm looking to do here. So if I'm looking to actually actively load balance, then originating virtual port isn't going to do that. All of the vSAN traffic is going to flow over one of those ports, and the other one is just going to be a passive, basically acting as a backup. So I may want to consider one of these other NIC teaming algorithms if I'm trying to support actually load balancing that traffic for vCN across multiple physical adapters. And what we're seeing here is a document in the vCN planning and deployment guide. So this is the vSphere 7 documentation. This is the vSAN planning and deployment guide. If you want to know the merits of those different NIC teaming policies, I suggest you come here and take a look at the documentation.